Hello, welcome to the Sustainable Lifestyles and Education Leader Series. My name is Laura Suillo Mesías, and I work for the Sustainable Lifestyles and Education team of the United Nations Environment Program. I'll be your host for this session. Today, we're talking to Laura Hunter, the creative director of Futera, a London-based change agency. They create campaigns that foster sustainable development. They've never knowingly accepted a client brief, funding, or partnership that has not served social justice or environmental protection. I want to thank Laura for joining us and sharing with the One Planet Network Sustainable Lifestyles and Education Program contributor cohort so that they can learn from their, her experience in the sustainability field. To start, talk, uh, if she would like to tell us how, uh, what drew you guys to sustainable lifestyles and education, because, you know, that's other thing as well. Uh, for us, for example, from the UNEP side, well, we obviously, we are the sustainable lifestyles and education team. There's like no thinking basis, but for all the other MAC members, there is something that drew them to the subject, which is really important that you can see why. Yeah. Uh, hello, uh, everyone. Uh, and thank you, Laura. Um, to answer that question first, I'll, I'd like to answer it maybe personally what drew me to sustainable lifestyles. And I think broadly at Futara is that ultimately uh, I'm and we're drawn to people power. Um, the idea that people can through the, you know, through the way they eat, how they vote, uh, how they interact with the world around them, um, the stories that we tell uh, one another. Um, the idea that people can have, um, they do have agency to act and to change the system. And I think there's something quite uh, disruptive and, and even subversive about that concept. Um, because while, you know, institution and governments, of course, have a huge, huge, huge role to play um, in uh, sustainable development and the transformation and the acceleration of our society through a just transition, um, the governments, institutions, businesses have got to play a role, but also people power can impact power structures as well. So I think that's why sustainable lifestyles is a particularly interesting concept for us. And then we want to talk directly about yourself. You know, we mm. all have very different roads to end up in sustainability. What was yours? Yeah, great question. Um, my road was, um, so I graduated uh, with my undergraduate degree um, and I was about to, you know, come into the labour market or the professional market. And um, I knew that I wanted to do something um, positive or impactful with my career. Um, but that's as really as far as it got. Uh, so I, I actually started out in the charity sector, uh, the nonprofit sector, uh, working uh, a lot with uh, youth groups and um, and with um, yeah organisations that centred uh, education and support for for young people uh, to deal with all the different issues that they might be facing throughout life from kind of um, um, you know uh, mental health support. Um, to a variety of different things. Um, so yeah, I started my career in the charity, charitable sector. Uh, and then I, I came across an agency, Futara, um, and I've been here for six years now. Um, and Futara, you know, I can talk a little bit about, um, go into more detail about what Futara do, but what drew me to Futara was um, the fact that this, uh, an agency could have a, um, outside like one organization could have this outside impact so by working with uh, the world's biggest brands and businesses and NGOs to get them on the on the right path um, and and whilst I've been at Futera I think that has ultimately really reinforced the kind of whole people power piece uh, that's sustainable like if we can get billions of people um, living sustainable lifestyles that's going to have a huge huge impact so but yeah that was my kind of route in so through the charity sector into uh, sustainable development and then from there to sustainable lifestyle directly through Futera or do you think there there is there something special that trusts you in there and kind of shifts to work towards that sector 
um so is there something say that again sorry Could you uh, specifically that towards lifestyles or you, yeah. you it was already Butera's focus and you just jumped in there or... yeah it was I think that has something that has run through for so Futera just to give you some context has been um around for about 22 years maybe more maybe up to 25 years now um and Futera has always been thinking about since its inception how do we um how do we get millions of people um engaged excited uh, motivated around sustainability um so that whole yeah so that I, I think that's been a central tenant of Futera's work um but kind of more recently that became more pertinent with the work that we've done on um the good life goals. I'm not sure if you're all yet yeah, all aware. Um, so take how do you take these big goals, the sustainable development goals that are essentially a blueprint for a better future? How do you take those and make them accessible um, to um, people, uh, people of all, from all walks of life? So actually, how can we through our lives as as people who are parts of communities, how can we um, play a role in accelerating that big meta agenda of the sustainable development goals. So yeah, long answer, but I, I would say sustainable lifestyles has been a kind of central tenant of Futera's work throughout the years. Okay, and now we turn to Futera specifically, and I just want to, we'll let you go on and share us your presentation on your work and what you're doing currently on sustainable lifestyles, and maybe just clear up uh, on the good life goals, uh, it's sort of similar to uh, the anatomy of action in terms that they, but they lead on from the uh, sustainable development goals and they have turned it into specific actions that people can do. You can just check it out. They did it as well with UNEP sustainable lifestyles team a couple of years ago. Yeah. So go ahead, Laura. Thank you. Okay, I'm gonna share my slides, just bear with me. Okay, can you see that, Laura? Yeah, you get it? All good. Okay, great. Um, so I'm gonna give you a little bit of a background of Futera and kind of what makes it different and what we do. So um, Futera is mission first, mission owned um, and mission led. Um, mission with a business rather than a business with a mission. And we were one of the UK's first certified B Corps, a member of UN Global Compact and some other initiatives as well. So what is our mission? Um, it's an Anthropocene awesome. That is why we come to work every day. It's what it's you know it's what we hold ourselves to. It's what drives us um, and it's what we try to steer our clients towards. Uh, um, so the Anthropocene, um, a word you may have heard that it's, it's essentially our new geological era. It's the era that we're living through. Um, kind of also known as the age of humans. So that we mean it's not just less bad or marginally better, but radically transformed. And our mission, you know, to make the Anthropocene awesome, we cannot as one, you know, relative agency it ever be begin to achieve that alone. So our mission is really an invitation. And what we want to do is we hope it inspires people, whether that's our partners, our clouds, awesome, not just to make the world a little bit, a little bit less bad. We want to radically transform it. And can we make the Anthropocene, which, you know, the geological era that we're living through today, can we make that um, amazing? Because um, here, um, so we have actually kind of, we're kind of represented in Europe, but also uh, North America and Mexico City. Uh, we have clients all over the world um, from, you know, as you can see on the dot. Um, and Futera is an interesting organization, I would say. Um, it's made up of um, essentially three enterprises that you see here and a nonprofit. So we're organized into these enterprises and an independent charity, all offering ways to fulfill the mission. Um, so the change agency is kind of what I've been talking a, bit, a little bit about today. We advise um, many different businesses and brands on sustainability. Um, Futera Makes, which is a product incubator. We have Futera Academy, which is a training and development arm of education, and also the Solutions Union, which is our nonprofit endeavor. Um, I think what's interesting uh, in, in all the enterprises and our charity, the, what really Futera has a special, it's a philosophy of what it takes to make change. So everything that we do is always rooted in and combined with logic and magic. And by logic, what we mean is the um, the technical um, sustainability, the you know grounded in science um, and evidence, 
and then the magic is um, how you really that's really about communications how you bring people with you and really what we do is bring both of those things together they so have robust magic the compelling the excitement the buzz the soul that makes people want to, to join with us and everything we do is kind of geared around the sustainable development goals so these are some of our clients our clients friends and partners and um, so we work with some of the most exciting organizations in the world from um, google to netflix to tommy hilfiger uh, wwf uh, and many all that you can see to have this uh, all over the world um, towards that mission that I mentioned. So what I'll do now is just share with you um, some examples of the work that we've done in the sustainable lifestyle, the good life goals, which I've mentioned uh, already. Um, so as I said, we worked with um, uh, many different partners, um, the government of Stockholm, Japan, uh, SEI and uh, the UN to interpret across the world um, make a credible impact uh, towards the sustainable development goals so we we turned the sdgs which i mentioned the blueprint for a better future uh, and human to the good life goals which was uh, which you can see here so really uh, uh, so how can people make a difference so you know good life uh, the sdg one becomes help and poverty rather than zero i mentioned before uh, i think really speaks to this so turning you know the sdgs into something that was universal like using this emoji language um, to help people engage with those issues the next project i wanted to talk about was something that we actually ran through the solutions union which is called everyday climate heroes uh, so during cop 26 which we had in the in the uk in scotland we wanted to we, we saw this as an amazing opportunity to engage the british public um, on climate action and how they action. And what we found was that in the context, in the UK context, people saw climate activists or climate actionists not, really, you know, they just saw people talking about climate action as politicians, scientists, you know, traditional activists. They didn't see themselves in the story of climate action. So what we did was work with a world renowned photographer, a celebrity photographer in the UK and in the US as well, uh, to take portraits of what we called everyday climate heroes. So we found 10 people who came from all walks of in their communities were making a real impact on climate action but had never received the uh, the headlines or the limelight and we put them on billboards all across the UK um, and um, here's an example of one of our clients, coal miner formerly uh, and now he was volunteering on a renewable on renewable energy schemes in his community so telling a new story about what our climate uh, what climate action uh, they had lots and lots of press coverage in the UK um, so we highlighted uh, you know, uh, uh, on the right there, a man who was build, helping to build low energy homes. Um, the two people on the left there had set up cycling schemes in their communities. One was learn and grow their food. And then we took that on a, uh, an exhibition to tell these stories in the heart of central London. And this exhibition has now just moved to another part of the country. Uh, so we're really people on what climate action looks like um, and that essentially allowing people to see themselves in that story. Um, the next project I wanted to share with you is something that we did through the um, uh, side of uh, Enterprise of Futera. And what we, um, what we did here was actually something really interesting. So people, um, you know, how do you, people love the world, um, but how do you, uh, obviously, how can you create a sustainable pet food or cat food either? So bringing, what we did was bring together um, sustainability experts. We worked with Mars Pet Care uh, to create a delicious, nutritious, insect-based cat food, uh, which had a much smaller, what we call environmental paw print. So this was the UK's first um, that we developed in partnership with Mars. And here are some of the, the branding. So we developed, so Mars developed the product, Mars Pet Care, so we developed the product in Futera developed all the branding, the messaging uh, of that, um, yeah, of, of available product. Uh, into people's hands. And then the, the penultimate project I wanted to share with you again around sustainable uh, lifestyles, Elizabeth, was um, looking for crime is a really awful, devastating problem, but um, has there's a real lack of awareness around it. Um, so what we wanted to do was raise the profile. So this was, and to raise the profile of international wildlife crime, what we knew we had to make it personal to people because wildlife crime could seem quite distant and irrelevant and nothing to do with your life. Um, this beautiful campaign um, to, to, to essentially help people uh, to connect wildlife crime with, uh, with people. So using you know, the uh, platforms of uh, we developed a campaign that allowed the public to find out what their kindred species was 
um, so that they could connect with the, the animals and the wildlife, sorry, that we're endangered about is uh, around sustainable lifestyles. It's planet placement. So this was a fascinating project that we did with BAFTA, which is the um, British Academy of Film and, of Film and TV Arts, Albert, to create um, planet placement. So this is looking at how can we enable sustainable lifestyles through Film, the mediums of film did was work with writers, script producers, um, many other um, uh, creatives working in the TV and film industry to show, to find out ways that we could show sustainable lifestyle, oh. really looking at the power of content and storytelling to raise, you know, to, yes, to raise the issues of uh, climate, act, of, of uh, climate um, and other environmental issues, but crucially to sustainable lifestyle actions, can we get into program, programming so that we can really normalize um, sustainable lifestyles through culture. So those are my, um, yeah, that's kind of some of the, um, yeah, and some of the, the work that we've been doing and are doing in this space. Thank you very I'll much. I'll stop now, I'll stop sharing now. <laughs> I don't know if maybe you wanna share something you're doing right now that you think it's interesting or? Um, or are they all protected by computers? Yeah, it's really hard to show work in progress. I'm so sorry. I would say the Everyday Climate Heroes is in progress. So we're now taking that to Liverpool. Uh, but yeah, well, there are, um, yeah, I'm like, back in progress. But um, hopefully that gives you a taste of, of what, we, what we've been up to over the last, well, over the Maybe recent. I want to ask you about the yes. advertising industry. Well, yes. of course, you, you are kind of the odd ones out that kind of disruptive uh, interventions have changed the industry uh, in a great manner of ways and I wanted you to tell us a little bit how has the ad agency changed and yeah. how do you think the ad industry yeah, changed really, and how do you really think, great you question. see it moving so I think forward? That, um, the advertising industry is now beginning to reckon with what its impact is so as an as you know the advertising industry is um, the maker of manners I would say so the audience um, has a real climate impact so the the ad industry's carbon footprint is relatively minimal um, but the impact of its work is exponential kind of banging the drum on for the past five years is that advertising the advertising industry must take accountability for its actions and we're now starting to recognize the role of advertising in um, proliferating glorifying making desirable unsustainable behaviors um, so that conversation is a, um, I think in the worst instances, you have advertising agencies um, doing the work for fossil fuel and oil companies. Um, but it's not just about that. It's also about the unsustainable. But industry collectively is now starting or beginning to have that conversation where they start reckoning with their impact. And I would expect that you will see much more um, pressure on the advertising industry around this. In Rebellion, the um, climate activists wrote an open letter to the advertising industry. Um, calling out its role in proliferating the climate crisis and nature crisis and um, so which was really great to see and that's kind of given the advertising industry a little bit of a kickstart in terms of reckoning with its impact but yeah you will expect to see in the future that this conversation yeah accelerates and then hugely. I wanted to turn to climate activism and in general trying to push these these goals they're very important and they're very serious but I like how Futera takes it and talks about it being awesome being talk in general it's not something that we associate when we talk about uh, climate change and, and doing something about it so why do you think it's important to think uh, this problem operational perspective and instead of all because we, we do know all about the academic stuff but I do feel that one point in which we fail is in trying to make it it attractive yeah not just yeah something. I think you're right, uh, and I'm glad that you've kind of grabbed hold of that about Futera, because I think that is what makes us different in the communication space around these issues. So um, I could talk about this for hours, so I've got to try to um, limit my answer. Um, but what is, is, you know, as a group of people on this call and many others like us, we care deeply about these issues. They uh, are the, these are the issues that get us out of bed in the morning. It's the issues that we kind of want to work on, campaign on. Um, so we hold as environmentalists or social uh, environmental justice advocates, um, which I'm assuming everyone on this call is. Um, we uh, we care, like we we really care about these issues so so much. Um, but not everyone does and not everyone is there yet. 
So it's very difficult to have a, an academic conversation or a solely academic conversation in order to change someone's behavior. Rationality is important, of course, um, but it's not that great at winning people over. Um, so we always believe in the magic, the storytelling, how you make this desirable, attractive to as many people as possible is really, really important. And that's because you've got to meet people where they are, uh, not where you want them to be. So that's why we always uh, come at climate and other sustainability communications with empathy. Um, and we think that we will get there much faster if you have a if you are presenting solutions um, to a better future. If you're presenting the solutions in a really compelling way um, that gets people excited. Uh, in a way that is desirable, attractive, exciting, fun. If you can do that from a behavior change point of view, you will have much more impact uh, than if you're just talking about the academic uh, rational arguments for climate action or any other sustainable lifestyle action. Yeah, I, I was actually hearing an activist uh, a couple of days ago talking about radical imagination. Yeah. I was talking about thinking it not of only as a, uh, as how because that is something that defines us as humans that yeah. kind of turns the thing that what makes us different is that we can actually imagine the future yeah. and build it before it even happens and imagine it even though it's beyond our means right now so how it should be shifted from a probably negative point of view yeah. to a more positive one so I wanted to turn to, uh, I read uh, one of your last reports, which is super interesting. I would recommend all of you to read it. That is called Sell the Sizzle. So if you could talk us, uh, to tell us a little bit about what, uh, what you found out on that report, which is super interesting in terms of how we should be communicating sustainability. Yeah, of course. So yeah, I, I also saw uh, the note on radical imagination. Just to talk on that first, it's really a lovely thing that if you want to, and we always come at it at Futera that if you want to change the world, you've first got to imagine a better one. It starts with your imagination, with your vision, with what the world can look like. Um, so yeah, completely agreed there. So in Sell the Sizzle, that was based on research around climate communications and understanding what, um, so, so we did a big piece of analysis of climate communications and looking at how do people respond to different messages and messages of threat um, can often, what we found, can often just make people switch off or they can make people turn away because it's too much to bear, it's too much to take on. So if you are, I don't know, if it, it, it can just be, it can either be polarizing, can make people turn off. Um, so going back to that imagination, Thing, what we found was a formula essentially for climate communications is called sell the sizzle which we call vision choice plan action so sell the sizzle I should say comes from an old advertising um, adage which is you don't sell the sausage you sell the sizzle so as advertisers you're not selling just the product which is like I mean, a sausage is like um, meat or ground up, often with like some not too uh, wonderful ingredients. An advertiser isn't selling the, that sausage. They are selling the thought of the sausage cooking, the sizzle, the, uh, and the experience. Um, so that's where the saying comes from. So sell the sizzle, uh, as I said, is vision, choice, plan, action. So start with the vision, start with what the world could look like. Um, then go into the choice what's our okay if you want we could either have that beautiful vision or we could have this awful apocalypse which one is it going to be um, plan what's our roadmap to the to the vision and then action which is your call to action what do you want people to do so that formula of vision choice plan action which which crucially starts with like what's the the, the beautiful possibility that we could have uh, is uh, the most effective in terms of uh, climate communication. And then uh, I wanted to ask you if you could give all of our cohort some advice in, in terms of uh, how to move forward in a career in, in sustainability. Oh, um, that's a great question. 
Uh, I think you guys are a really amazing time through a career in sustainability because the whole world, I feel, is now uh, beginning to wake up. Uh, so we could be at this point where, um, you know, you've got the world's biggest businesses, amazing charitable organizations, amazing nonprofits, incredible change makers, all wanting to put their uh, businesses and organizations in service to that better world. So the first thing I would say is what a brilliant time to be starting a career in uh, sustainability. Um, and I think that... Um, my advice would be um, do what brings you joy. So figure out what, so there's this amazing Venn diagram that you may have seen. Uh, it, so think about what, what is, what's your superpower? Um, what, what do you as an individual, everyone is so unique. Um, and we all might have different superpowers. So someone might be really great at graphic design. There might be someone on this call who's a brilliant, I don't know, more into the science. There might be someone who's great on social media. So think about what your unique skills are as a starting point. Then think about, okay, what is what the next circle is? What's the job to be done? So what are the issues that need working on? Is it, you know, climate justice, sustainable lifestyles. Um, but then think about what brings you joy, what kind of gets you out of bed in the morning, what don't ever neglect your joy as well, because otherwise you'll lead to burnout. So think about your unique superpowers and then find out a problem that you can, can help solve it. Um, that would be my advice. Uh, well, I want to thank you very much. I really enjoyed this. I hadn't done an interview in a long time. I actually studied journalism. So you're kind of taking me back a couple of years ago so thank you very much and oh, thank you that was a great interview thank you for being a very kind interviewer <laughs> this was our interview with laura hunter from Pretera. thank you so much for joining us it's been a pleasure having you with us today we hope to see you and again in another session of the sustainable lifestyles and education leaderships goodbye